we're going to start with the absolute basics. You, know, you may think, show me something interesting, I know, I know the basics. You may think you know this stuff, but the, uh, the human thing is we don't know what we don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And if you don't understand this stuff, this basic stuff properly, it's going to come up and bite you later. I can guarantee it. So we're going to do everything. We're going to build a foundation properly. Everything is based on, every sophisticated thing is based on these basics. So we set the foundations. And we're going to start with timing and spacing. Two entirely separate things, which often get smudged together. And I've heard great animators arguing about the timing when they're talking about, when they're really talking about the spacing, or arguing about the spacing when they're really talking about the timing. So we're going to separate these two. I got my first big lesson from Grim Natwick, the great animator who animated uh, half of the princess in Snow White. So we'll find out what timing and spacing are, the difference between the two things, and we'll make it absolutely clear. Somebody put me on to Grim Natwick, who was then 90, and Grim, uh, Grim made it to 100, and, and uh, he had a big party in Hollywood. Of course, he, he never knew any, they never knew him because he was so old. And he was a wonderful raconteur. He designed Betty Boop, and he was in animation all the way from the very beginning through Snow White, and, and then he worked with me in the end, till he was 92 or something. And after his 100th birthday party with these 500 adoring animators in Hollywood, he rung up Chuck Jones, who he knew as a little boy, <laughs> and he said, I'm not going to go for 200. <laughs> so he was a very, very old guy. And he was an Olympic jumper, and he had these giant arms and great big shoulders, even when he was 90. So I must have met him he was 89 or something. And I'll never forget it. It was in a Hollywood... Uh, basement, the kind of fir trees, and the, and the twilight, uh, the golden twilights coming in the window, so half of it is in blue shadow, and half in the twi in the orange twilight, and these big spatula hands, and I said, I was asking, how do you, what, tell me about animation, tell me how it, what, tell me what, if you could boil it down, what would you say it is, I mean, can you boil it down, and he says, wow. Animation, it's all, it's all in the timing and in the spacing. It's all in the timing and in the spacing. Strange, the Americans should have developed it. <laughs> no, that was it. So, if we use this the horrible old bouncing ball example. Well, first, let, yeah, let's, we're going to have the ball hit here, 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 and here. So this is going to be boink, 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 boink. So it's going to go donk, 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 donk. Make that one closer. Boink. Okay. That is, let me do this in red. That is the timing. Okay. I mean, this is such an obvious old thing, but I don't think people, th I certainly didn't, separate the two. When he says timing and spacing, I could never tell which was the spacing, which was the timing, which is which. The timing is the, the hits. Doink, 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 whatever. The spacing is the, the ball, if it squashes, you know, whatever. It goes up here, and of course it's slowing in the middle of the arc. The spacing is more close together, and then it's down here, funk, and okay. So this overlapping, it's overlapping up here, 
And of course, it's further apart there as it's going faster. So this is a soft ball, right? Doink, 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 doink. And that, of course, is the spacing. So when we're doing a complex character, such as me talking, and I'm going dump, dump, bump, the timing is the dump, dump, bump, right? The spacing is all the junk that's going on in between here. So <laughs> let's be over, I'll overdo it. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Is the clusters, uh, are these things overlapping? Are they close together in here and then they're going far apart here? That's the spacing. So the most complex piece of action is just a combination of the timing and the spacing of it. Obviously, if the drawings are closer together, the ball will move slower. And when the drawings are further apart, the ball's moving faster. Here's a great way of showing the difference between timing and spacing. This coin takes one second to go across the screen. It's going across in even spacing. Now, let's take it across with uneven spacing. But it still goes across in one second. The same timing, but very different spacing. Now let's see them both together. And we see something very interesting. Although it doesn't look like it, they start at the same time and they end at the same time. Everybody here has a natural sense of timing, especially if you're athletic or if you're musical, because ti timing's built right into us. But the spacing for animation, we have to learn. And uh, this is what we're going to achieve in this session. It takes a while, but, you, but you'll get it. This is the same bounce that we've seen before, a small hard ball. And here it is with its spacing positions. The spacing creates the feel of a small hard ball. Now here's a squashy cartoon one. And here it is with its spacing positions. Now this is a larger, slightly soft ball. And here it is with its spacing positions. Now this. We're just using a circle, but it's how we space those circles, how we cluster them that creates the illusion. In this case, a heavy bowling ball. Here's a light ping pong ball. We know it's light because of the timing and the spacing. This one weighs almost nothing at all. Now let's take out every other drawing making it twice as fast. Let's try it with an object. The chart. There was a 
if we take um, Mickey Mouse or something, or mouse that are, they all look the same at the time, and he's moving from here to here with the head, okay, and the hand is up here, and it's going to go down into here. And say he's got a tail that's going from there and it's going to go down into here. You know, we have these charts on the drawings, right? Telling you the spacing of the drawings. They are either here or here. Grimm would have a, he would do an arc. You'd think that would be an arc. And then he'd put a little chart on it. Um, say it's like this. You know, it's just slowing into that. And then you have a different one on the nose. Uh, maybe it was like that. And then you have an even, even one on the tail. And you have these little charts on the drawings. Everything doesn't happen at once. Our generic mouse is going to move the hand, the head, and the tail at different speeds. This is why they developed separate little charts different charts for different parts. The nose is going down uneven. The finger goes down, easing out and easing in. Uneven. Say the tail goes down even. Each part has different spacing, but it all takes place in the same amount of time. They put different charts for different parts so that everything didn't happen at the same rate. This loosened things up. So it isn't like a robot, you know. So you break everything up. Is that clear? Ken would always make me, I, I would always try to start drawing because that was what I felt most comfortable with. And he'd say, no, God damn it. He said, do the timing. And he would make me, um, I don't want to get on the exposure sheet yet. But if this is, a, this is a classic Disney sheet, four seconds, everybody knows what these things look like, computer guys? <laughs> They're just four seconds on a page or six feet. And Ken would say, look, where does he hit the ground there? Mark it. There's your accent. When, and where's your next hit? Okay, here. Okay. And you got two little hits here and here. Okay. Now put another drawing here, get that hit. And I would have to do these important drawings. Right? So he'd say, come on, Dick, no drawing, get a stopwatch or a metronome and let's act it out. And he'd make me act it out, whatever it was. Da, 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 da. And he'd say, no, do it again. Da, 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 da. And I have to do it again and again and again till I had it clear in my mind what I wanted and, and he had it clear in his mind. And he said, those are the hits. So he's doing the timing first. Then he's going to go in and animate it once he's got his keys, but we're coming to that. This is how the chart <laughs> what I'm trying, how it got over to this part of the field. Every, everything will get clearer as we go. I but, have one question. Um, for those of our, us that don't, aren't familiar with animating on paper, these two drawings are going to be on separate sheets of paper. Yeah. Then where do the charts end up? Where do the charts go up? I mean, well, you're drawing them on one plane? On, on one page, either the first one or the last one. Okay. We, we would draw it on. And you put the one. frame numbers? Yeah. Okay. And we might, we of course would probably put in some more drawings before we handed it to some poor assistant. Okay. I do want to. Yeah, that's how I don't know how you guys do that. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't do it necessarily this way. <laughs> Maybe we should. This is the history of charts, but. Whether you're drawing this or creating this in the computer, the principle is the same. Different parts move at different speeds. I was lucky enough to know this guy, Dick, Dick Humor, which is odd. He was a Disney story member. His name was spelled like this. And he was one of the main first story guys on Snow White. And uh, he and Joe Grant were the story people on Dumbo. And he was also co storied Fantasia and everything. But he had been the top 
New York animator doing Mutt and Jeff's in sort of 19, I don't know, in the 20s. And Dick was a, a good draftsman, and he also did comic strips, but a rather good, um, rather good drawing and stuff. And he was the leading, leading uh, animator. And he would, uh, he'd do all the drawings. If he was doing drawing one, and he would just do drawing one, two, three, four, and five, right? And, and the head of the studio, Van Buren or whoever it was, said, gee, Dick, the work's wonderful, but we, we wish we could get more of it. And so Dick said, well, if you give me somebody else to put in here, um, to put in two and four, put in these in, in, the in-between drawings, I'll uh, put in the in uh, I'll get twice as much work done. So... That was the invention. Dick invented the in-betweener. <laughs> said, because they used to just work kind of straight ahead, you know, just drawing things, and and then he would just do every other drawing, and then some other, or several people could just put in the in-between ones. If we have drawing one is our extreme. I'm calling this an extreme. Not a key. This is important. Okay. I'm doing, as we're doing here, the one in the middle, for purposes of this class, I would like to call the breakdown. We spell it this way. We just break down, break down, we meant break. And we underline it. And that's number three. Okay? And number two and number four are just plain in, in betweens. If you want to be intellectual about it, an extreme is wherever you get a change of direction. It's, it's, or, or you could say when you start an action or end an action. Let's do it again, calling it number nine. We just have, we're doing drawing one, an extreme. Number nine, an extreme. One in the middle is five, the one in the mid which would be the breakdown. One in there is four, six, and then you got seven, eight. It doesn't matter you put them above or below. Three. Okay. And this is what they call in the trade the slow. That's the slow out. We're slowing out of drawing one. And we're slowing in to draw. We've, we've put the one in the middle, smack, important drawing. And then we're slowing in to drawing nine. I always get balled up with slowing out and slowing in. I think of them backwards and everything. The best way is the way the computer guys talk. You talk about easing in and easing out. It's much better, isn't it? Ease out and ease in. We can show this with a pendulum. Here's the arc that the pendulum will swing in and here's the breakdown or passing position. Add in-betweens. <laughs>